Hi, my name is Joe Pass, and uh, today I want to talk about uh, building single lines on various chord changes, chord patterns, or maybe just individual chords. Uh, um, and uh, but before I start that, I'd like to maybe you you would like to tune up. So here's a note to tune up with. Say. You can uh, tune to any note. Um, usually I use a tuner to tune up with. I find that's the best way for me, or else I give my guitar to a friend and have them tune it. But, uh, and then there are other ways of tuning that is with uh, harmonics. And then this way I really learned when I started. But anyway, you choose your own way. Before we uh, go into... Uh, building these single lines, uh, I'd like to give you a little idea of how I look at chord changes. First of all, I look at chord changes as uh, very basic. Major, minor, and dominant seventh are the only ways that I look at chord changes. I'm not interested too much in whether a, a chord is a C major, ninth, eleventh. I just want to know if it's a C major, or a C minor, or a C seventh. And in the dominant family, I include uh, the diminished chord as a dominant seventh flat nine chord, and I, I include the augmented chord as a dominant seventh raised fifth chord. So uh, in the dominant family, the diminished and the augmented become dominance for me. I use them. I put a root on the chord and use them as dominance. So when you look at chords, the only thing you have to look at is, is, is the chord a major, minor, or a dominant. And so simplify your thinking, and thus you can build lines that are easier to uh, kind of uh, picture or hear in your ear. When you're uh, playing chords uh, with all complicated uh, uh, intervals on them or notes that like a C7 flat 9 raised 9 flat 5 that, that's too much uh, too many numbers and too much to try to 
incorporate in your playing. Just to want to know whether it's a C seventh or C minor or a C major. Before I finish this portion and we'll go on to tape some lines for you on these major, minor, and dominants, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about my right hand. I'm in this case using my fingers, and I play mostly with my fingers. And it's a good idea, as I have said before, to learn to play with your fingers, finger style. It's not hard to do. You just put your hand on the guitar and sit there and watch the television set for a while, and your fingers will fall. Uh, the way they are most comfortable, which is not the classical way. Uh, it, they will fall for yourself the way they are most comfortable. And you use your fingers. You can play a lot, especially if you're playing solo guitar, you can play a lot more freer, a lot more counterpoint and so forth. Playing, And, and I don't pick, I don't have any particular set of fingers. I'm not playing like... I sometimes play one finger, twice, two fingers, whatever is most comfortable. I don't uh, have any system, and you don't need a system. Only what works good for you. Uh, and I use a pick. And the pick, in this case, I use a very small pick, a half of a pick. And it's just an uh, idiosyncrasy of mine. It's a habit, and I don't suggest that you use a small pick. I, suggest that you, I don't suggest you use a half a pick. I suggest you use a small pick, but not in this case this small. This is what I do. But... I find it very difficult to use a pick that is large because I think the closer you are to the strings, the, the better feeling you have for the instrument. So that's why classical players actually, I think, feel the instrument because their hands are on the string. This is the, anyway, the pick is... On a string, it's alternate. Down, up, down, up, down, up. When I change strings, it's down. Even though it should be alternate up and down, I don't uh, do that, so uh, uh, I always pick down, even if I'm going back. That's two down. Once in a while. Very seldom. So you find my playing has very little of very little back picking. Uh, I think you get a lot of definition when you pick down. This is all, by the way, G7. This is G7 augmented. A lot of playing in this case, uh, for me, I do a lot of pull-off, hammer, and slurs. Just I'm picking the note. If you want to practice it, you should practice like this. You have to strengthen this finger. I think the weakest finger for most players is this finger here. This. So. See, that's not pick. It's not... hammer. Okay, as I said, uh, we would choose some chords and, uh, and uh, I will play some lines on them. First, I'll start with uh, just one basic change. And I'll keep everything in the key of C. And naturally, you know that if you... Uh, uh, play in another key, it's the very same principle, the very same idea, so there, but key of C would be the easiest key to uh, give examples in. So for instance, if I have a C major chord, 
major seventh, but I call it C major. Um, first of all, I, I use very little arpeggio, so you would hear very little of in my playing. Now, it's not that it's not done or it's not good, it's just that I don't do it. If I were to play a line in this, with these intervals in, in mind, C and B, I would play it this way. Starting on the root and ending on the major seven. Very seldom do I play. Or, or, or. So, this is a line on C major seven that just comes to my mind. This line comes from here. Now, if you're going to play, you should also be able to play these lines in other places. So now, once again, here's C major 7th, and here's another line. In many instances, repeating a phrase an octave lower is done a lot, and it makes it for a longer line. using the, uh, 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 the 11th, but it has to be pure. If you cannot repeat, if you cannot repeat the line that you played, it is obviously not anything worth playing, because it means that it didn't come from your head, and it, 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 it and, and it, it's not music. It's a, maybe a kind of a geometric movement, like uh, some people will play three frets across, or things like that. Uh, which are exercises or, or movements, but th they are not music. They are not, in a sense, uh, your music, your identity. And, and the object of playing lines is to be able to have a kind of a style of playing or a, a identity to your playing so that when someone hears you, they say, that's so-and-so, that's it. So if you can't repeat the line that you're playing, it means that it's not it's not in your head, it's not in your head or your heart or somewhere, so it doesn't make any sense. So I will play a few more lines on C major 7, some very uh, basic, uh, I sometimes play. 
Now, in that case, I played uh, an arpeggio because the arpeggio is practically spelled out in the chord form that you're holding. Uh, another line. Now, in this case, I am playing lines. When you have a one chord, which is now, in this case, a C major seven, when you have a one chord for a bar, you can always, always use the five chord as a movement. In this case, it's G7 flat nine. There it is. Raise fifth, flat nine. And I'm going to be assisted by my good friend Don Mock, who you won't be seeing because it's me. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so we just left off talking about major chords, major uh, chords, and I played some lines for you. Now, re remember that there are just an infinite amount, infinite amount of uh, lines that you could play. Uh, every melody that you might learn that it, it, it could be applied to a major chord, any melodies. To, so, you know, melodies are important. So, as an aside, you might consider learning as many songs as you can. That is the melody content, the melody of the song, not just the chord changes, but the actual melody. So now talk about minor. In this case, C minor. Once again, first I would consider the, the sound of the chord. Here's a, 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 maybe a line on uh, C minor. In that case, it's an arpeggio. I'm holding this form is to show you that it comes out of there. I would normally not play with this grip, with this C minor chord. I would play. 
but I'm showing you that so you can see that most of the playing comes from one of those bar forms and all the notes you're looking for are right next to one another and the fingering is not very difficult so Once again, I'm telling you that when you have a one chord, in this case C minor, you can always use the five chord as a to build the line on. See, there's another line on C minor. Once again. Now, that is an example I told you that lots of lines are played in two and three octaves. That's one. It can't go any lower. So. Once that's, that is a three octave line. So this is an, an also a C minor kind of a line. Uh, I'll try to play some minor lines just off the top of my head. This would be all C minor. So what you're hearing in the case of those lines is you're hearing me play the one chord, which is C minor, through the fifth five chord, which is G seventh. And usually I'm using augmented sounds because to me uh, these sounds go together. If you examine uh, chords, uh, you'll see, in this case, C minor ninth is a B-flat triad, which means, to me, that I could play B-flat triads against a C minor chord. Um, if you examine uh, C minor seventh like this, it's an E-flat triad which means that you could play certain lines on E-flat forms. Now, I'm talking, I know that uh, uh, modally you can do all these things and you understand them, but I'm talking about a lot about how the chord looks to you when you hold it, when you grip it, so you can see. A lot of playing is uh, dictated a lot by forms that you play from. In this case, the C minor here, tells me that E flat works, so that means that I could play this E flat, this E flat. So rather than have a lot of information uh, that is uh, theoretical, that works, but you're always thinking about what you're playing, it might be a good idea to observe a little bit what you're doing with your fingers and, and, and look at it like as if it were a puzzle that you were trying to figure out, where you could see that in this case a C minor has an E flat triad, this has a B flat triad, and uh, various things like that so that you can get a picture because most of the notes you're looking for when you build lines are going to be inside those forms.
inside those forms. And you can do away with having to consider whether you're playing a mixolydian mode or whether this mode, because it's very important that if you're in the key of C minor, that anything you play should relate mentally and that is uh, form-wise to C minor and not to some thought of a mode, I think, because the guitar dictates, is laid out in such a way that uh, if I'm playing in C minor, I don't want to know that I can use a, a B flat major scale against it because if I have B flat major in my head, I'm not actually hearing and seeing and feeling C minor. So I always work from the root of the chord and anything else is uh, built on top of it. And I always consider myself, in this case, C minor, I'm in C minor and I don't want to know about what other mode fits on it. Now, uh, we're talking about the dominant seventh chord, and that is a very important chord, and a lot of players don't get enough out of it. I think uh, there's a lot of, most of the tunes have dominant sevenths in them, especially standard jazz pieces. So in this case, we're talking about G7. And uh, once again, I would hear, I would think in terms of... That is the complete sound of this chord. I don't look at that as a, as a scale, though it is a scale, but it, to me it, sound, it has this sound. And then in this case it's a G69 or a G13 or whatever. G7 is all I think about. It has this in it. So here's some lines on it. Something like that. Here's some more lines. you can always use the uh, um, let's see this is a five chord and this is a two I believe and uh, by the way when I when I see chord changes that have uh, this kind of a movement I completely disregard the D minor seventh it doesn't enter my thinking or my uh, it's superfluous to go and then think of D minor 7th and play, and then play some kind of a G 7th. Because if you play this, if you have this in mind, you have already included the sound that you need. The main sound between the minor 7th and the dominant 7th is this. That's it. 
So I would uh, eliminate immediately if I saw chord changes with, that had, I would eliminate the minor seven and go right for the dominant and play off the dominant. And you're free from trying to think in terms of two changes. You're, you've broken it down to one and you have already included that dom minor seventh change. So here's some more lines on G7. G7. It's all G7. Now, if you have these kind of uh, dominant seventh chords, which are flat nine, raise nine, flat five, raise five, then you have to alter your scale. And, and I'm talking about uh, these chords. The only thing you can alter in a dominant seventh is a flat nine, raise nine, flat five, raise five. So you have this. the bar. Flat nine, raise nine, regular third, raise five, flat five, raise five, seventh, root. So if you have those kind of chords where you have lines are different.
everybody plays this. There are infinite amount of variations on that kind of a diminished. And like I said before, I include this chord, which is a diminished chord, with a root as a dominant seventh chord. So I can play all these lines on this kind of a dominant seventh chord, a flat nine chord. Diminish. case D flat is the flat five of of, of uh, G G7 so and I'm now thinking also of D flat as a form you can see so in this case I'm thinking of this So here are some lines on, on altered dominant seventh chords. Okay. We're going to now play a one six two five pattern for you so I can play uh, some lines for you. And I will play my lines in the beginning, straight eighth notes, so you can see maybe how they go in from one change to another. Okay. Flat nine. 
This is G7. This is C. Remember, when you do one, six, two, five, you can make them dominants or, or minor sevens or raised nines, flat nines. They don't have to be just one, six, two, five pure chords. You have to build your lines around. It's a good idea to play in straight eighth notes to see if you can connect your lines from one chord to another. These are all altered dominant seventh chords. This is E seventh altered, it's E seventh raised nine. So I'm playing a line on it, which is like this. Then the next one is A seventh, which is altered in another way. It is a it is a six chord with a flat nine. This is a flat nine. So I'm playing. Next one is a D seventh raise nine flat five, a raise five, and I'm playing. And then G, augmented raise nine. So what we're doing is we're playing it's the same principle as, as if we were staying on a G7 chord, only we're using E, A, D, G, which is a whole bunch of two fives. So what that is, is two five. E minor, A7, D minor, G7. Or E, A, D, G. Or B flat, A, A flat, G. It's either chromatic or flat five. But the example we're trying to show is how to play on altered dominant chords connecting them up. So now Don will play a little rhythm on that. Three, four. One bar for each chord. Three, four. that if you don't, if you can't hum the line and you can't repeat it, then it's probably not a good line and it's probably not coming from your head, but it's coming from your fingers. So I hope you have fun with this tape because I'm going to eat now. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs>